subtract to it, positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, now, let's talk about energy. Energy is pretty cool. Okay, step one, the sodium chloride dissociates. It takes significant energy to break that apart. I want you to think about this. Just for sodium chloride to melt, you have to heat it to over 900 degrees. That's just to overcome the um, Coulombic attraction of the lattice energy. Um, so to make this break apart, it's not even a compound anymore. It takes a ton of energy. That is going to be the, did I write it down? That's going to be the heat of solvation. So this dissociation, let me give you another term and I'll write it in pink right here. This is going to be your heat of solvation. The energy required to dissociate, okay? The energy to break that apart. So this is the energy. And to dissociate a molecule, it's always going to take energy. If it didn't take energy, everything would just um, self-combust. Everything would just break apart by itself. We wouldn't have any compounds. It takes energy to break compounds, to break that intramolecular force, the ionic bond. Now, the water surrounding it, okay, this gains a stability because it's a positive negative interaction. That is called the heat of hydration. Hydration, heat of hydration. Sorry, do you not, let me write that down here because I know sometimes it's hard with hyphenated words. Heat of hydration. Now that is going to release energy because of the stability of the ion interacting with that polar molecule, the ion dipole intermolecular force, it gains a stability, so it's going to release an energy. So I'm going to put right here, the heat of salvation is always going to be endo. You always have to put energy into that. The heat of hydration is always exothermic. It's always going to release energy when that solute surrounds the solvent, or excuse me, the solvent surrounds the solute because it gains a stability, gains a stability. Now, the overall heat of the solution, okay? That is simply going to be, I put it right up here, the heat of solvation breaking the solute plus the heat of hydration surrounding the solute. Um, so the amount of energy that it takes, add that to that negative energy, the energy that's released when I say negative energy is because it's exothermic, right? This is going to be positive endo. This is going to be negative exo. You take that positive delta H plus that negative delta H releasing, and whatever you get at the end, the sign, it tells you if the overall solution is endothermic or exothermic? Did ultimately net require more energy or did it release energy? Okay, so look at these two scenarios. If we get a negative exothermic um, solution, okay, a heated solution that's exothermic, it means more energy was released when the water surrounded it than the amount of energy it took to break apart and dissociate those ions. Now, what's the evidence? What's the data for you to know that this is a delta H negative exothermic? It's the solution increases in temperature. So the solution will increase in temp. This would be, I take hydrochloric acid, really exothermic, you guys, add it to water, okay? Um, and actually what you do is, well, so let's mix these two together, okay? Um, I have my water, I add the little bit of hydrochloric acid, I've got my temperature probe in there. The hydrochloric acid is going to ionize, it's going to break apart, and it's going to be surrounded by water molecules. I'm going to see that temperature probe go up, 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 up. It is releasing energy. Yes, it took energy to ionize and break apart the HCl, but the energy released when the water molecules surround the H plus and the Cl minus releases so much energy that the net is negative. The temperature increases. So when a temperature increases, it tells you it took less energy to dissociate, to break apart, than the huge amount of energy that was released when the solvent surrounded the solute. Okay, now an endothermic reaction. In an endothermic um, reaction, we would see that the heat of solution is a net positive. It required energy. We had to put energy into this one way or another. And that means that the heat of hydration, the amount of energy released when the water surrounded the ions, is actually less 
bring the amount of energy it took to dissociate and break apart those ions. Um, so let's take um, an ammonium nitrate, no, an ammonium chloride. We're going to do an ammonium chloride. So I dropped the ammonium chloride into the water, put the temperature probe in there, and guess what? The temperature goes down, 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 down. I know that this is an endothermic reaction. The solution um, decreases in temperature. And what that tells me is that the um, solution is robbing, it's actually this whole process, um, the breaking apart is taking energy from the solution itself. So the solution, the energy, maybe it starts at 20 degrees, it goes down to 19 degrees, 18 degrees. Where did that energy go? The energy went into breaking apart the ions, breaking apart the ammonium chloride. So that tells me it took more energy to break apart the ions, dissociate those ions, than the energy released when water surrounded the ions. So endothermic tells me the reaction took more energy than energy released when the salvation, when the, um, the solute was uh, surrounded by the solvent. Took more energy to break apart. Step one took more energy than step two. And that would be endothermic. And I'd see it because the temperature goes down. It's like, ah, oh, that dissociation process is actually costing us energy. It's costing us more energy than energy released. Okay, this chew on for just a little bit. Chew on for just a little bit. I want to say it one more time, okay? So wrap your brain around this with me, all right? We're going to have an exothermic overall reaction. I drop a salt, the temperature goes up. Here is how I explain it. The energy it took to dissociate that ion was less than the energy that was released when the water surrounded the ion. So the net was a release of energy exothermic. There was more energy left over released to the surrounding um, because more energy was released when the water surrounded the solute. Now, deep breath. Let's do another one. Okay, I put my temperature probe into my solution. I throw um, my, don't throw. I want you to gently place with safety glasses on. Salt inside the water. The temperature goes down. Here's how I explain it. It took more energy to dissociate those ions than the amount of energy that was released. It cost more than what was given out. Um, and that would be a net endothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction. Okay, good work. The salvation process and nitty gritty, you got to look at endothermic and exothermic for the um, salvation breaking apart and the hydration, the surrounding it. Good work. You were doing awesome. Have a good day. Thanks.